Well, let's sit down and talk about Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian, episode 10. Going into this episode, I was ready to be amazed, but I came out seething and my hair standing straight up and goddamn mind blown. So I want to talk about some of my feelings about this episode as well as some things we can learn from it. Do know that this video will be spoiler heavy, so I do recommend watching the anime before watching this video if you for some reason haven't already. There's like two stories in this episode, the first one being a date with Alia disguised as a birthday commemoration, and the second one being a parent-teacher meeting with a lot of goofy encounters. The episode starts off with a very relatable scene of Kusei studying. He tries to study for his exam the next day while being tempted by an anime episode that was releasing at the same time. Wait, this sounds a bit familiar. Anyway, then Alia calls him and picks up the phone. I won't go on about the phone call, but Alia finds out that Kusei's birthday was over and kinda gets sad about it. After all their exams, they decide to walk home together to discuss about the closing ceremony, but they got into none of that and instead got into a small quarrel about Alia not being invited to Kuze's birthday party. A very important thing I want to point out here is that Kuze says in his mind that Alia hasn't been using Russian to hide her feelings a lot lately. I don't know whether it's due to a placebo effect or something, but throughout my seven rewatches of this anime, every single time, I noticed that the amount of Russian slowly dies down across the episodes. I like to imagine that in Alia's discovery of her love with Kuze, she slowly starts getting more comfortable with him and also hides her feelings less. I also love the way Kuze maneuvers out of this kind of awkward situation and also adds on a date with Alia as a birthday party. Just another reason why I like Kuze so much. His social skills are through the roof while being funny and good looking. Ah oh, damn, I'm really judging the looks of an anime character. Now the actual date is even crazier. They first discuss about the strategies for the closing ceremony and how Yuki with Ayano has much better chances than them, yada yada. What I really love about this is how Kuze assesses their situation. His thinking is strategic while also understanding Alia's boundaries and his opponent's mindset. Considering that Alia wouldn't want to attack Yuki and Ayana psychologically is such a normal but beautiful, subtle way of expressing that Kuze takes into account past conversations and uses it into his consideration. Then the chaos unfolds. Alia waited till Kuze was embarrassed and flustered, and then he started hitting real hard. And you know what else hit real hard here? The multiple references to previous episodes. Remember episode 1 when she said Milashka to cover up her feelings? This time, she goes no filters and just says how cute in Japanese. Remember when in episode 6, Alia feeds Kuze ice cream and then couldn't use her spoon after? Now she feeds him in steak and without any hesitation, uses the exact same fork. This type of romance comparison is pink. I'm not going to go to the bridge scene cause... Well, I wanna be at least a bit family friendly and I'm damn sure you guys will enjoy it by yourself. So I want to say it was extremely funny when Masha went to make tea and declined Ayano's help even though she couldn't see nor hear Ayano standing up. So much for training to become heir. So finally, the last part of this episode and objectively the best part. Grandpa was cooking with the outfit by the way. In this part, we finally get to see a glimpse of Kuze and Alia's family in the anime. From the start of it, I was already hooked onto this family aspect as it was what gave life to Yuki's dynamic character and the relationship between her and Kuze as distant siblings. But while waiting for their turn in the meeting, Kuze and his grandfather meets Alia and her mother and immediately, Kuze knew that his grandfather would jump out of his chair and start making a scene. This whole interaction was crazy funny with Kuze's grandfather freaking out about Alia. Or Kuze tries to talk to Alia's mother. Imagine how awkward it would be if your grandfather talked to your crush and asked her if she wanted to marry you while being directly in front of you and her mother. But in the end, it's all humorous, playful teasing and Alia's mother caught on and started teasing her as well. A social beast being put into a situation where his embarrassment skyrockets out of the atmosphere is such peak comedy, man. And I'm on to the final scene of this episode. 
Kuze's grandfather meeting Yuki's mother. If you're still not informed, I'll run down the family conflict real quick. So, Kuze and Yuki are siblings, but their parents are divorced. Kuze went with the paternal side, while Yuki, who had asthma at that time, went with the maternal side. The scene was the paternal grandfather meeting the mother. And if you think I have nothing to say about this part, you will be absolutely, unfortunately right. Why did it have to end it here? I really have to wait one whole week just to see more family lore. This is crazy stuff, man. So in the final conclusion, I would rate this episode 8 out of 10. It's a really great episode showcasing some really well-made romance and comedy scenes. Surprise, surprise, this is a rom-com. But what I ultimately love about this episode is the subtle ties as well as the obvious references to previous episodes to compare how much the love between Alia and Kuze has changed. Though I'm still wondering how they will fit both the closing ceremony and the presidential election in the last two episodes. I really just hope they wouldn't leave the final part into a season 2 or something 4 years later. I respect Doga Kobo for keeping us on our toes all the time, but it would be a bit much to tease up with a season 2, wouldn't it? Since this is my first long form video on a topic that I'm not really familiar with, I would just like to thank everyone for watching, leave your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and thanks for your support. Huge shout out to my sanity and MC for working on this late into the night. Bye bye.